In this video, we're going to go through the process to install a DC to DC charger. We will give you the basic steps and tools needed, but it's important to note that the vehicle engine compartments and their layouts are different, so each approach will require a slightly modified setup. With that said, you're still going to get the essential knowledge to get it done yourself. So let's get started. If you aren't sure what a DC to DC charger is, be sure to watch our other DC to DC charger videos. Link in the description below, of course. Also, find out if your vehicle has a smart alternator prior to attempting the installation. If unsure, contact your vehicle manufacturer's local dealership. Tools needed for this installation are eye protection, wire strippers, electrical crimper, electrical wire, a multi-connection battery terminal, which is optional, a multimeter is also optional, wire terminals depending on your setup, and ANL fuses with fuse holders. You'll need three 40 amp fuses and fuse holders for the 25 amp DC to DC charger. If you are installing the 40 amp DC to DC charger, you'll need three 60 amp fuses and fuse holders. Step one, find the ideal mounting location for the DC to DC charger. The unit is waterproof and sealed, but as with any electronic device, it is best to place it in a location that is away from heat, vibration, water, etc. Once you've found an appropriate mounting location, disconnect the starter battery's negative cable. This is going to be the black cable with the negative or minus sign. Next, let's start running the wires. Here's the proper way to connect the wires using the provided butt splice connectors and heat shrink tubing. First, you'll slide the heat shrink tubing over one wire. Strip the protective sheath from the wire with the wire strippers to expose the conductor strands inside. There should be approximately 3 eighths of an inch of bare conductor strands exposed. Next, place the butt splice connector over the bare conductor strands. Use the wire crimpers to firmly press and lock the butt splice connectors onto the conductor strands. Repeat the process on the remaining wire. Slide the heat shrink tubing over the butt splice connector and the wires. Use a heat source to shrink the tubing. A heat gun is ideal, but a lighter can be used in its place if used carefully. If you're running a solar panel, connect the green wire from the DC to DC charger to the solar panel positive input. Be sure to add an ANL fuse in line on the wire. For our example, we're using a 25 amp DC to DC charger that's 15 feet from the solar panel. According to the chart located in the instruction manual, this wire gauge needs to be 10 gauge or greater and also requires a 40 amp ANL fuse. Now let's connect the starter battery by connecting the yellow wire from the DC to DC charger to the positive terminal on your main battery. Don't forget to install the fuse on this wire too. This wire can be connected in several different ways. You may be able to use the existing setup by adding a ring terminal to the end of the wire connecting it to the battery clamp. If you have a side post terminal, you may need an adapter. You may also opt to get a multi-connection battery terminal to make it easier to install this and future accessories. Next up is the alternator trigger wire. If you have a smart alternator, you're going to need to connect the blue wire to the vehicle's ignition. If you don't have a smart alternator, then you can just leave this wire open. To connect the blue wire to the ignition, you'll need to find a vehicle wire or fuse that receives power when the ignition is on. If you're proficient with a multimeter, you can easily find a source. Otherwise, you're going to need to consult the dealer. Now we're going to connect to the auxiliary battery. This procedure will be the same as the connection we made earlier to the starter battery and will depend on the terminal type located on the battery. As before, don't forget to add a fuse on the positive wire between the battery and the DC to DC charger's red wire. Are you running the remote monitor in your setup? Now would be a good time to install it. If running into the cab of the vehicle, find an access point through the firewall. I will often find an existing loom of wires that are already going through the firewall and run the cable alongside of them. Usually there's enough space to accommodate additional wires. Once you've found a way into the cab, you'll have to find a place to mount the remote. We like the custom ones made by Solve Function. Most modern vehicles have an easy to locate grounding point within the engine compartment. Find a nice solid unpainted ground location and run the black wire from the DC to DC charger to this location. Due to the varying ground post types, the type of wire termination needed will vary also. In our setup, we're using a body ground that is already present. And there you go, we're done. It's time to program your DC to DC charger to match your setup and the needs of your system. 
Take a look at our other video on how to program the DC to DC charger so that it's optimized for use with your system. Do you have any questions or comments relating to this video? Leave them down below and we'll answer them for you. Don't forget to follow us online at Wagon Tech and a huge thanks and thumbs up to you for watching this video.